Welcome to my Thailand Holiday 2015 video. To check out my previous Thailand video first, please click the above or you can keep watching this video for updated tips, tricks and places to see and things to do. In September 2015, we stayed at the Hilton Arcadia Resort in Karen Beach in Phuket. The Hilton Arcadia was about a 10 to 15 minute tuk-tuk ride to the tourist area of Patong Beach. So it was nice to stay away from all the hustle and bustle and the noise of the main tourist beach. Each time we needed to travel to Patong Beach or Bangla Road, it cost around 3 to 400 baht or 11 to 15 Australian dollars. And split by two to four people, it was quite affordable. When we arrived, due to the fact that we holidayed in the low season, September, we were upgraded to a room with a better view for the same price. The Hilton Arcadia is such a big resort that it's like its own small campus, and you can travel to different cafes, restaurants and pools by way of shuttle bus that arrives each time in the main foyer, approximately every 5 to 10 minutes. We travelled with another couple, and this way, getting around by taxi or tour buses was a lot cheaper. I've never travelled with three other people before and I think it's one of the great reasons to get a small group of people together for your holiday. We went to the Phuket Fantasy Attraction. It cost 2,200 Thai baht for the show and the buffet, plus an extra 300 baht for the tour bus. So all up around 2,500 baht or around 100 Australian dollars. Never in my life have I felt right about seeing animals perform at a circus and seeing them caged in zoos. At the end of the fantasy experience, there is a show and they use animals in the show. If anybody knows any information about how they treat animals at the Phuket fantasy, please comment down below. That aside, in my last video, I had someone ask me if they should do a boat tour and fantasy on the same day. I don't recommend you have a full day at sea before coming to fantasy. Uh, as this will probably make you overtly exhausted due to all the visual stimulation and walking around. You don't want to rush here because it's nice to dress up and make the most of the night. Wear comfortable shoes that you'll be able to walk in for at least four to six hours. You'll also want to take along some money to spend on souvenirs. Your buffet dinner is included in the price of your ticket if you choose. And there are vegetarian and vegan options available. And if you want drinks, they do cost extra. From memory, it may have been around two to 400 baht for a cocktail or approximately five to $11 Australian, depending on what you like to drink. Overall, Phuket Fantasy is a fun and exaggerated cultural experience. When you're venturing into the main tourist area, be careful what you eat. I recommend looking at TripAdvisor if you're unsure of the place where you're thinking of eating, as some places with open kitchens can be dangerous, especially if you eat meat or seafood. I do not eat either, so there is less worry for me, although noodles and rice can be sometimes cooked in contaminated water, as hygiene standards aren't the same as in Australia. You may be generally okay with fruit smoothies, crepes, and that sort of thing on the side of the road. The best piece of advice that I was given about water in Thailand is that the Thai people are not superhuman and they don't even drink their own water. I recommend bringing gastro stop medications, hydrolyte, and Panadol just in case. Shops, restaurants, massage parlors, street food carts, they're usually open until about 10 or 11 at night or even later depending on the day and in the high season. Of course bars and clubs are open until the early hours and there are no lockout laws for bars and clubs like in Australia. Most bars and clubs are free to get into but some may be around 100 baht. If you want to go to a ping pong show, they're free to get into although you must purchase a drink upon arrival which can cost up to about 800 baht depending on the place you choose to go. Because we arrived at the end of the wet season, we experienced a Thailand flood. And this was pretty exciting and the rain was really refreshing because it's so warm all the time. We went to the Big Buddha and it was much more interesting than the time I went in 2013. There was a lot more to see and the temple had changed. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my camera on this day, but the Buddha is free to get into and you can spend money on souvenirs as well as making a donation to the monks for a blessing or paying to put your name and a positive affirmation on a brick that the Thai people will use to structure the inside of the Buddha. When choosing your elephant tour, make sure you do your research and find an elephant park that treats their animals ethically. As I mentioned in my last video, it's always polite to leave a tip for the Thai people who take you for the ride on the elephant. And we chose a tour which is part of the Trip Advisors Hall of Fame and it was called Siam Safari. Siam Safari has won some awards for treating their animals ethically. The Department of Tourism for the Ministry of Tourism and Sports in Thailand awarded Siam Safari Nature Tours with excellent for their standard of elephant camps. 
We also spent a full day on a speedboat tour which left the harbour at around 8 o'clock in the morning and arrived back to the dock at about 5. This trip was a full day and cost 2,000 baht or 80 Australian dollars. We made a stop at Monkey Bay, which is on Koh Phi Phi Don. We snorkeled at the famous Hin Klang, and you can relax or swim at Koh Mai Pei or Bamboo Island before exploring Koh Phi Phi Don for a buffet lunch. The lunch includes dessert as well as tea and coffee, and it's all included in the cost of your ticket. There are, of course, vegan and vegetarian options available. The rest of the day was spent at Koh Phi Phi Lay visiting Maya Bay, which is the location for the Hollywood film The Beach, and snorkeling in some of the clearest water on the planet. Wear your bathers of course, bring your own snorkel if you feel funny about taking one from the meeting place at the marina, bring a towel, a hairbrush, a hair tie, sunscreen, toilet paper, and a spare change of clothes if you like. We also did Zorbing or Rollerball and this was a really great experience and a fun adrenaline rush. Phone this place before going because they may be able to pick you up for free and take you back to your hotel with their own shuttle bus. This may be only during low or quiet times though and it may cost money for their shuttle bus in peak season. The day we went it was raining heavily although it didn't really matter. There are three options to choose from for your Rollerball. We chose the two rolls for 1,350 baht, which is around 50 Australian dollars. And this was our first roll and my first experience. Ready? Yeah, no. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, bro. Nah, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, We then travelled on a small plane to Koh Samui and stayed on Koh Panyang for the Thailand full moon party. You can check out more details for the full moon party experience plus tips and tricks here and I'll also link the video below. We stayed at the Coco Lily Villas in Wok Tum and I also give full details about the villa stay in my full moon party video. We did a little bit of exploring on Koh Panyang Island after the night of the full moon party because we stayed for a couple of nights. We did some shopping too. Unfortunately my camera HD quality setting was reset somehow and I wasn't aware so please excuse the poor quality of this footage. We spent lots of time relaxing on the island and spent lots of well-deserved hours in the pool by the villas, which was a great way to end the holiday. So thanks everyone for watching and please post any questions you have below. I'd be happy to answer them and stay safe.